so. Okay. Good evening, Periscope. Um, good to have all of you tuning in again. Uh, I'm going to continue uh, tonight on the subject of uh, ma mantles, uh, ministry gifts, ministry gifts and mantles. I trust that those who tuned in yesterday were blessed um, and encouraged by the word. Um, so I want to give you a few moments to invite some of your friends and followers. And I also want to um, uh, reiterate um, announcements I made on yesterday concerning uh, the Stephen A. Garner Scholarship Fund that is available. Uh, we want... Um, and those of you that have you know, children, um, nieces, nephews, cousins per, per se that are uh, college age or even in uh, technical school uh, to apply for this scholarship, we're giving away two of them, uh, a male and female uh, student. And you can do so or they can do so by visiting uh, sagministries.com. That's www.sagministries.com to, to apply for that scholarship. Uh, so once again, um, sagministries.com, the Stephen A. Garner Scholarship Fund, uh, something that uh, my wife and I began on last year. Well, it was her brilliant idea, and I jumped on board, and we want to just um, be a blessing annually about this same time. So um, the application deadline is June 30th, and... Uh, September 1st, we will award uh, the actual scholarship. What we will do is have, um, uh, what, what we do is we'll announce the winners and we'll share them through our social media outlets uh, to let people know. We have it on our uh, website as well, uh, who the recipients were last year. We uh, were able to give a scholarship to a student uh, at a local school here in the Chicagoland area and then also one downstate in Bloomington Normal. Uh, so we're looking forward to doing that again, and um, as time progresses, perhaps being able to um, uh, uh, sow into the lives of other students as well. Uh, bless all of you, and thank you once again for tuning in. Um, and um, we're going to go ahead and get into this teaching. Uh, also, for those who are in the southwest Michigan area, uh, this Friday and Saturday, I'm going to be ministering uh, at Rivers of Living Water Ministries International in the city of Muskegon, Michigan. Uh, that's 1550 East Laketon Avenue in Muskegon, Michigan, where Apostle Rodney and Prophet Selena Stevenson are the senior leaders. Um, we have a great church there, very vibrant uh, multicultural congregation, and we're going to be dealing with apostolic momentum. Uh, there'll be a time of Q&A on Saturday, May the 7th. Uh, Friday night I'll be ministering. Uh, we're going to be prophesying and laying hands and blessing of the people who are part of that. And I um, want to encourage you all to keep tapping that screen. Uh, tonight, I'm going to talk about how to put a demand on the anointing as it relates to uh, ministry gifts and mantles. And we want to look at uh, the life of Christ in particular. And we're going to launch from there uh, to be a blessing uh, to you tonight uh, and really share what I believe God has ordained uh, for us in this hour, learning how to put a demand uh, on what God has ordained, put it, placing a demand on uh, the anointing that God puts inside of ministry gifts and vessels in particular uh, to really minister to our needs. And so uh, we want to make sure that we are uh, in compliance with the scriptures and really pressing into what God has ordained. So uh, I'm going to look at several scriptures tonight. So um, as my custom, I give scriptures. I like to share the word and because uh, my opinion at this point doesn't matter. I was doing a study um, on the subject of hearing the voice of God. We've been teaching this in our local church for the last several Wednesdays. And one of the things came to me, I was reading something about George Mueller. And it said that he um, uh, said that the greatest way you can come into really hearing God's voice for others in particular is to empty yourself of your own opinion. And so I think that's extremely important to empty ourselves our own opinions so we can hear from God clearly. But let's go for this tonight. I'm going to reemphasize um, a mantle. Um, as I stated last night, a mantle uh, is a scriptural metaphor or is symbolic for a calling, uh, for a ministry or ministry gift, uh, for the anointing, and when, and when applicable for a respective office. 
uh, that's given to individuals by God. So our mantles can, uh, are comprised of our calling. Uh, it can be uh, that which identifies us as a ministry gift, the anointing that's on our lives, and when it's applicable, also our office. Uh, and a mantle, is, it brings a mark of distinction upon you as a ministry gift. So in other words, there's, there's a distinguishing mark that's placed upon your life uh, when, when your mantle is identified. Also, your mantle qualifies you to serve in your respective office or grace. And then your mantles can also be accredited to the anointing or the power that you flow in. And then the last one I emphasize with that mantles determine uh, destiny before it actually begins. And so when we look at the life of Christ, I'm going to kind of camp out in the Gospel of John. Uh, Jesus performed several miracles uh, in the Gospel of John that brought a mark of distinction to his ministry. And the first one, of course, is in Cana of Galilee, uh, where Jesus turned water into wine. God bless you, Prophet Helen. Um, and I want to just give you this verse, um, uh, verses 1 through 11, John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. This is the first miracle that's recorded uh, concerning Jesus' ministry. Bradenton, Florida, God bless you. Uh, it says in verse number one, in the third day was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus, and both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, they have no wine. And Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. In verse 6, And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. And Jesus saith unto them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, Draw out now. And bear under the governor of the feast, and they bear. Now, when you look at these 11 verses, I only read like the first eight of them, but a demand was placed upon Jesus by his mother Mary. And what I found to be interesting as I was studying this is that Jesus did not address her as mother. Um, what 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 it said what 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 Jesus identified as was woman. And when you study the scriptures, you will begin to see that there are references when the Lord had a demand put upon him. Often he would in turn refer to people, especially women, as woman, uh, like 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 um, the 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 woman who 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 had a sick daughter, and she comes to Jesus, and Jesus tells her basically, woman, don't you know it's not meat to give uh, the children's bread under dog? And so the emphasis I'm bringing out is that Jesus. Jesus' anointing was activated because his mother placed a demand upon him by simply saying, making a statement, uh, we ran out of wine. So in other words, this is, I need you to respond to this specific need. And because Jesus was anointed uh, for six specific things, according to Luke chapter four, where the Lord declares the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, to set at liberty them that are bruised, uh, to recover the sight of the blind and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. So Jesus was anointed for specific purposes, but here a demand was placed upon him to minister to the needs of those who were who were part of a wedding feast that he himself was invited to. He was summoned to this specific feast, and and and, and Jesus now begins to flow in his in, in in his anointing. His mantle for miracles is activated because a part of the Lord's assignment, of course, was to manifest the power of God. Was to manifest uh, the supernatural. Everything about his life was governed by eternity. Everything about his life was sanctioned by heaven. And Jesus begins to manifest the power of God in an unprecedented way. And what I'm going to highlight over these next several minutes is that either a request was made of him to do something or either Jesus himself was questioning people in order to really move into the manifest power of God. And this is what we want to get into. And I really believe that uh, God wants to, to, to really highlight some things for you and I in the context of how we relate to Jesus to really begin to draw from that mantle on his life, whether it's counsel that we need because the spirit of counsel is upon him, whether it's, 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 it's breakthrough, the spirit of might is upon him, or, or miracles are connected to that realm, or whether whether it's, 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 it's Jesus Christ, the teacher, there's a teaching mantle upon him, there's a deliverance mantle upon him, blessings to you, Houston, Texas, there's a, there's a mantle for 
for signs and wonders that's upon his life. There's a mantle for healing. There's a mantle for, for breakthrough. There's a mantle for increase, for enlargement. The fullness of the Godhead bodily dwells inside of him. And everything that you and I need in the realm of, of, of men to progress in the kingdom and to advance in the purposes of God is found in Christ. But we need to know how to put a demand upon the anointing that's in him and, and to activate uh, him in that realm of supernatural capacity on our behalf, on behalf of those that God himself sends us to. One of the one of the great challenges of many that the church faces today is really beginning to lay foundation for the Lordship of Jesus Christ to be established in the body of Christ. Too many people are taking credit uh, for things that belong to Jesus. Too many people are trying to be Jesus Jr. And the fact of the matter is that we need to put a demand upon him. And, 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 the, and the reality is, is that when we do this, there's going to be a greater glory that I believe God will release upon the earth. I'm convinced that there's going to be a greater release uh, of the weighty presence of God because wherever Jesus declared, wherever, wherever he is lifted up, he will draw all men unto him. A lot of hype, pretense, a lot of our personal charisma, a lot of things about us that bring attention to us that we should be giving to God is going to be, is going to dissipate because we begin to place a demand upon that which Christ alone carries. And that is the power of God in a phenomenal way to minister unto people and deal with things that only God can deal with. It, have you ever wondered why uh, people can be uh, uh, involved in, in, in church for years and caught up in so many things and their lives never change and then there's more of a dependency on a man than there is on God? And it's not that we should not trust the Christ as in people, but uh, priority-wise, no one should have a greater precedence in our lives than Jesus. It's amazing how we can talk about ministry, ministry assignments and all this and never mention Jesus at all. I'm convinced we've got to uh, believe God for restoration of his lordship in the lives of his people. But let me let me move on with this. Uh, the mantle that Jesus had upon him uh, was, 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 was a demand was placed upon it and a miracle began to flow. Now, let me give you this. Uh, the mantles God places upon us are to help the church excel. Part of excelling is also advancing. Stagnation and limitations can be broken off the church through the mantles that we have. I want you to notice how in verse four and verse number five, Christ declared his time had not yet come, yet uh, Mary, his earthly mother, had put a demand upon him and, and this demand activated his mantle and the anointing for miracles begin to flow. Uh, atmospheres, climates, and cultures will determine the kind of flow that we can actually have. Anytime ministry gifts in an environment and there's a demand that's placed upon what they carry, it's going to be activated. Like in our local church, when we move into uh, deliverance and we have deliverance intensives and mass deliverance services, uh, because our job, it, it, one of our mandates in God, when we gather people, what's on us as a congregation, congregation can now begin to flow freely and those who come that need prayer, that need deliverance, who need breakthrough, who need assignments broken off of their lives that may need a miracle where demonic bondages have been operating in them, uh, the years of laboring and, and, and studying and seeking God and all of a sudden in atmospheres like that, uh, that we've established in prayer, it's easy to flow in that realm of miracles where we manifest the power of God and demons are driven out of people. It's not hard or difficult for us to do, but this is, this is just the goodness in the mercy of God on our behalf. I remember years ago, maybe uh, 14, maybe about 18 years ago, where I began to, we, I was in a local church and uh, we, my wife and I went through a foundation class, a new members class, and, and uh, they were honoring all the new members. And uh, my pastor, uh, he's still my pastor now, when, I, when we got on the stage in front of him, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to ask him uh, for, 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 for uh, an impartation of that mantle that's on his life. And she said, well, you can't ask him that. And I said, no, I'm going to ask him. I'm putting a demand on him. And I said, I want that mantle that's on your life. And he just kind of looked at me and chuckled and said, don't worry, you'll get it. But in my heart, I was convinced that what he carried would eventually begin to flow into my life. And, and lo and behold, years later, I received tremendous impartation, tremendous break. Through. He's probably been one of the uh, one of the greatest assets in this realm in the context of ministry uh, for a pattern and model, all because a demand was placed upon him. And I, I followed him through the process I talked about last night, Gilgal and dealing with Bethel and then dealing with uh, 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 dealing with Jordan and with Jericho and dealing with Jordan, those four places.
phases of transition to catch the mantle. But let me move on. Atmospheres are extremely important uh, because the environment of faith must be established and so that when the anointing begins to flow, we can receive what God has ordained for us. Also, unbelief is a major threat uh, to the flow of the anointing. And even for Jesus in Mark chapter 6, he could only do a few miracles uh, because because of the, the, the unbelief of the people. And, and I want to, well, let me highlight this in John chapter four, John chapter four. Here's another one. John chapter four, uh, verses 46 through 51. It says, Jesus came into Cana of Galilee. Uh, he, this is his second trip around where he made water into wine. And it says, and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick, uh, at Capernaum. And when he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, you would not believe. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down here, my child die. Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And, and, and the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him and went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. This man came and besought Jesus. He placed a demand upon Jesus. And one of the things the scripture tells us about him, that the Lord declares he is the resurrection and the life. If we believe on him, he would not perish. This man put a demand on the anointing in the life of Jesus. And, 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 and because of his request for Jesus to come, and heal his son. That is what Jesus was anointed by God to do, was to set the captive free. So this child was set free from the captivity assigned against his life through death, uh, through premature death. And Jesus carried uh, the power of God without measure and as a result of a request being made of him. So here's one of the ways that you and I can put a demand on the anointing is by beginning to request certain things of God. The Bible says to ask and it shall be given. To seek and you would find to knock and the door shall be open. God bless you, woman of God. Uh, and, and this is amazing because a lot of times we'll go through things in life and we'll ask other people, but not necessarily ask Christ. And sometimes our inquiry of Jesus is also what he will begin to stir others and activate inside of them what only he can do through them. And this is why we've got to understand the importance of really placing a demand on the anointing. Christ is the anointed one. And all, all of us, we are subjects of him in his kingdom. And there are different ranks. There's different measures of authority. He entrusts the ministry gifts. But Jesus Jesus declared, I'll work with you and I will confirm my word with signs following. And so the mandate for us then as born again believers is to begin to inquire of God, to ask of God. You can pray. God knows how to raise up people. He's, as a matter of fact, he knows everything. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. And so what he wants to do is really develop uh, the church. I'm convinced in this season where a greater demand is put upon him to manifest his power and then he'll begin to move through people. This is what we this is what we're contending for to uh, bring the glory and the honor back unto him to bring all all the admi admiration back unto him, all the accolades unto him, all the praises unto him, because when we put that kind of demand on him, he knows how to stir and activate people in the earth realm to do what he in turn has anointed them to do. Sometimes we go seeking our favorite prophet. Thank God for prophets, the prophetic anointing. But I'm convinced that our ultimate seek should be for God. As a matter of fact, Jesus tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added. So it is extremely important that we learn how to pursue Christ, make him our priority and begin to ask of him. Like David begins to prophesy in Psalm 2, ask of me and I'll give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the other most parts of the earth for thy possession. Jesus wants a demand to be placed upon him. I think you go from bottom to top for uh, to share with your Android friends. Uh, and John chapter five, here's another one and ver verses five through nine. And we know about this. This is the man who was bound up for 38 years. And Jesus basically comes into contact with this guy. And in verse five, it says, and a certain man was there, which had an infirmity uh, 30 and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? Now here you see where Jesus is asking a person, Will you be made whole? Sometimes God will challenge us. Uh, in, in the area of, of, of questioning us concerning certain conditions in our lives. Do you want to be free? Will you be made whole? 
Are you ready to come out of this condition? Have not you been here too long? Will you let me heal you? And sometimes God will challenge us that way and he will do it through people, of course, but it's God actually challenging us. And when we give the proper response, that is when a demand is placed upon the anointing and all of a sudden miracles begin to manifest. Jesus' mantle for the supernatural was activated by the demand that the people put upon him. And so Jesus himself is the worker of miracles and we cannot we cannot, we should not limit him. We cannot be effective if we limit him. Our ultimate trust should be in him and in him alone. And so a demand was placed upon him, of course, and the impotent man answered in verse 7 of John chapter 5, and answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled, because this is when the angel was stirring up the water, of course, to put me in the pool, but while I am coming, another step it down before me. Verse 8, Jesus said unto him, Rise up, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, took up his bed, and walked. On the same day was the Sabbath. So Jesus released the power of God because this guy basically began to say, look, I don't have anybody to help me. But 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 the ultimate help was there. That was Christ himself. And because this guy responded properly to Jesus, the power of God was made manifest and breakthrough uh, came into his situation. A 38 year condition was broken. Because this man believed the words that Jesus spoke over his life. And so this is this is important. So I say unto you, even those who listen to me tonight, rise up and walk. Whatever it is that's had you in a condition where you have been limited and depending on other people to pick you up, to take you here, to take you there. Rise up and walk with a demand on the anointing of God. Because God in this season is dealing with infirmities. He's dealing with impasses and things in our lives, in our emotions, in our mental faculties that are serving as, as, as a means of keeping us bedridden concerning our assignment. So take up that bed and walk. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. May your ministry uh, be revived. May your marriage, your finances, may uh, your parental capacity be revived. Whatever it is you put your hands to do, I prophesy and I declare rising in this season uh, and wholeness coming upon your life in Jesus' name. Then in John chapter 6, John chapter 6, this is, a, of course, a, a, a miracle where Jesus uh, 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 moves into this aspect of, of me feeding the masses and, and touching multitudes. It says in verse number 2, a great multitude followed him. That, that, that stirred him. A great multitude of people followed him. I'm convinced that there's something that stirs Jesus when people rise up in their personal walk and begin to follow him. And this is one of the things I'm convinced that activates the anointing, that releases the power of God, that causes yokes to be destroyed, that displaces demonic burdens in the lives of people is that when you go through the cycles, the challenges, the in different seasons of life, you still follow hard after Jesus. Uh, that is what will begin to make you a candidate for supernatural things that take place. So, so a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain and there he sat with his disciples and the Passover, a feast of the Jews was nigh. When Jesus lifted up his eyes, he saw a great company come unto him. And he said unto Philip, whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered, 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. Now, this is interesting because what happens in, 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 in John chapter 6 is that Jesus begins to manifest miracle working power and multitudes of people are, are, are fed supernaturally because of that miracle mantle that was on his life. And when requests are made of him or even when Jesus himself begins to make requests of us or ask questions of us, this is one. This is something that it activates the, his, his mantle. And what we want to do is learn how to, as, as believers in our personal lives, put a mandate upon Jesus to manifest his power, putting a demand upon the anointing. Of course, Jesus uh, feeds multitudes of people. Uh, there's the miracle uh, that, that came when he began to set them in order, uh, when they begin to follow instructions. And sometimes what will also cause miracles to flow is that when we continue to follow instructions Jesus gives us, you'll come to a place where all of us a sudden supernatural things will begin to happen and this has become so difficult in our day and age because uh, people are actually exercising more faith and trust in the ability of men uh, that are representing Christ and they are in Christ themselves and this is not to take away from any of these dynamic ministry gifts but I'm convinced that all of us even us dynamic ministry gifts should be followers of Christ uh, this is how people get into idolatry get caught up 
in deception and error, it is extremely important that 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 we begin to embrace the things that God has ordained uh, uh, for us, and really begin to place uh, a, a demand upon uh, 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 Jesus Christ Himself, who is a real person. When you get in this Bible, you read stuff, you see promises in this Bible, you begin to say, "Lord, be it unto me according to Your Word," uh, and you remind God of what He's declared by way of a promise and that mantle that's on His life uh, for miracles to manifest in us will be active. And what God does, he raises up people and people serve the purposes of God. And this is how we can begin to move into the end. And then sometimes there are things you'll find where uh, no man will have anything to do with it. God himself will release it. It'll be supernatural and he'll raise up a heathen, somebody that doesn't even know him, that's not even interested in him. And he will use them to further his purposes in your life. And so I want to just highlight that. Then here's another one in Matthew chapter 14 from verse 25 through verse number 25. It says in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went under them walking on the sea. And when the disciples, when his disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying it is the spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straight with Jesus spake unto them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Matthew 14, 25 through 29. Be not afraid. Verse 28. And Peter answered and said, Lord, if thou be, if, if, if it be thou, bid me to come under thee on the water. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Let me say this to you. That there are some places in life that God has ordained for your feet to walk in. In other words, it is a part of your destiny. And it's the mantle on Jesus when we place a demand upon him to bid us to come into certain areas. In other words, give me permission to come out of this boat, this place of confinement, this place of limitation. It's been a method that has served its purpose in the previous season, but now I'm seeing you move in a realm that I believe that by faith I can begin to access, so bid me to come. So for a lot of us, there's a necessity for us to step out of our boats and, and get into a realm where supernatural things are taking place because we have requested of Jesus to bid us to come. A demand is placed upon him. Permission was granted and Peter begins to walk on the water. I'm convinced that some of us are about to walk into places in life where our background, where society, where your socioeconomic status, where your family line, where the community that you're in, you were reared in, have said there's no way you'll be able to access this place. But I'm telling you, people, uh, in God, all things are possible. And Jesus declared, except that be signs and wonders, some will not believe. And so I prophesied that level of activity of come out of your boat uh, and step into a realm uh, where it requires supernatural activity to move in, to manifest it. God wants to do it for you. And this is not just a Bible story. You have to realize that these guys were expert fishers. They knew about the water. And so they knew about stuff out there. And they said, look, it, it's a spirit. So in other words, they had to have some demonic encounters on the water as well. But but then they say, Lord, if it's you, Peter says, bid me to come. Jesus says, come. He steps out. And I'm telling you, this is a season for you and I to rise up and step out. Step out into that realm of impossibilities because with God, all things are possible under them that believe. Take that step of faith. Step out and, and launch that business. Step out and begin to launch at that school. Step out and launch those entrepreneurial exploits. Step out. Believe God for nations. Cry out for them. Step Step out, believe God to raise up that mentoring group. Uh, step out, believe God for that youth advocacy campaign uh, that's been in your heart. Whatever it is that the Father has put in your heart, Lord, bid me to come. Step out in that dimension and watch God do it for you. This is a season where when we put a demand upon his mantle, supernatural things are going to begin to happen for us. Here, here's, here's another one. In John chapter 11, John chapter 11, many of you know this, where Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. Lazarus had died. And then Jesus basically was grieving over Lazarus' death as well. But at the same time, he's the resurrection. He's the life. John chapter 11. And then you'll find in verse number 21 through 27, it says, uh, when Jesus gets back to Lazarus' hometown, uh, he says, the, uh, then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if you had it been here, my brother uh, had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou will ask of God, God will give it thee. She put a demand upon Jesus, who is also the resurrection and the life. Whatever you will ask God, 
I know that he will give it thee. And Jesus said unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Uh, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this. Now, I'm, I'm one of the things, I've seen miracles where we pray for people, people with vision impairments, hearing problems, people that had terminal illnesses like cancer, uh, diabetes, the reports have come, stuff has been in reverse cancer and remission. We've seen miracles in our church, but one thing that I am believing God for, that the day will come where the dead can be raised because one thing about miracles people miracles cannot be denied somebody being raised from the dead ain't there there's no refuting that especially when there's death certificate signed and they've been dead lazarus was in the grave for four days stinking i mean rigor mortis uh decomposition everything has started setting in you have to realize there were no chemicals in bomb bodies back then and none of that stuff was taking place and jesus goes and jesus looks up to heaven first and said father I thank you that you always hear me. Uh, and he says, and I'm basically saying this to you because of these, these, these folk around me who do not believe. And then Jesus calls Lazarus forth from the dead. And the Bible says he that was dead came forth uh, bound with, with, with grave clothes and a napkin around his face. And Jesus speaks to the grave clothes, loose him and let him go. And I'm, I'm believing God that uh, you and I will begin to enjoy that level of power in this season uh, with those who are bound by grave grave clothes. Uh, we can speak to those assignments, loose them uh, and let them go. We got to put a demand upon the mantle that's on Jesus uh, and what Jesus in turn will do. He begins to activate people in the earth realm who are part of his assignment, who are joined unto him. And sometimes he bypasses that. And I'm telling you, God wants to do it supernaturally. We got to get vision for the people we're called to, for our cities and territories, for our regions uh, and begin to place a demand on Christ. Jesus himself alone, like for instance, in Matthew chapter 23, where Jesus begins to weep over Jerusalem and says, how I long to gather you as a hen gathered her brood, but you would not, you would not let me gather you. Therefore, your houses are, are left desolate under you. We got to put a demand on Christ, on Christ alone to see miracles, signs and wonders. I'm believing God for breakthrough for you, for your ministry, for the call of God that's on your life. The mantle that you carry is something that has been uh, prescribed by heaven and ordained by God. And when we learn how to take what God has given us and put a demand on Jesus. This is when we start seeing phenomenal things take place where water can be turned into wine, where blind eyes can be opened up, where lame people can be healed, where, 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 where loved ones can have their dead raised. God wants to do it for us. Uh, and this requires a level of faith and trust in him, not just for Jesus to do things to bring attention to us, but for Jesus to perform things through us so our Father in heaven can be glorified. I believe God wants to do it for you. May you be activated. May you rise up in this season. May you step out of your boats, begin to walk in places that the devil has said is forbidden to you, that you will never access it. May you come into new levels of influence. May acquisition be upon your life in this season. May God cause a tremendous groundswell of activity around the ministry he's called you to serve in uh, and a supernatural increase uh, and may you begin to know uh, 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 the goodness of God by way of miracles as you place a demand upon Jesus uh, and may the enemies assigned against your life know the severity of the God who answers by fire. These are the days, saints, of great contending where we've got to practice exalting Jesus uh, and make sure his church is restored to him, that all honor and glory goes unto him, that we also learn how to walk in that place where God can be glorified, where, where the power of God flows. Because when you look at the life of Jesus in Luke chapter 2, verse 40, it says, The child grew, waxed strong in the spirit, was full of wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Jesus waxed strong in the spirit. And I, God wants to raise up a people who will also wax strong in the spirit and putting a demand upon the power of God to flow, the anointing of God to flow. I decree it is your portion. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning into this scope and sharing with your friends. Uh, we're grateful and appreciative. And we'll come back on. We're going to do some more, uh, one more teaching perhaps on the subject of, 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 of mantles and ministry gifts. And we're going to talk about touching the mantle and just look at the life of Christ 
And then look at some activity in the, the acts of the apostles where uh, mantles were, were activated for the power of God to flow. God bless you, people of God. Strength and honor unto you.